It is the uh, 2nd of June, and from this day in Baptist history, we're going to be reading a Baptist in Westminster Abbey. Our passage of scripture comes from 2 Samuel chapter 2, and uh, verses 4 through 6. And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, that the men of Jabesh Gilead were they that buried Saul. And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord, that ye have showed this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. And now the Lord show kindness and truth unto you, and I also will requite you this kindness, because ye have done this thing. The Baptists in the days of the English Commonwealth under Cromwell were very evident in the military, and I quote, as early as 1644, William Packer was lieutenant colonel and was so efficient that he was expressly reinstated when dismissed by Scott on the ground that he was a Baptist, end of quote. That showed where Cromwell had a voice, ecclesiastical bigotry should not spoil a regiment. So when a regular army was reorganized on a new model under his inspiration, a very large proportion of Baptists were found in its ranks. Before long, this splendid force developed a determination to win the war outright and then secure thorough liberty, both civil and ecclesiastical. Three top-ranking military leaders in England in Cromwell's day were avowed Baptists. I refer to Colonel John Hutchinson, General Thomas Harrison, and Admiral Richard Dean. Our attention today is particularly attracted to Major General and General at Sea Richard Dean, since on this day in 1653, he was killed in the naval battle off North Foreland. Richard Dean was born at Gunting, Poor, England in 1610. During the days of the overthrow of the monarchy, he had charge of the artillery at the Battle of Naspey. That battle ingratiated him to Cromwell for he did much to gain the victory over the army of King Charles I. The battle was fought on June 14, 1645, and the victors captured 5,000 prisoners with all the king's munitions. They also conf confiscated the king's private papers that soon printed for the world revealed the king's schemes to repeal anti-Catholic laws, introduce an Irish army, and hire foreign mercenaries. Dean, Governor Gow, Hutchinson, and Harrison were members of the High Court of Justice that tried and condemned King Charles. A month after the death of the King, Dean was appointed one of the generals at sea. The two others were Edward Popham and the brave Robert Blake. General Dean contributed largely to the crushing victory at Worcester, where he held the rank of Major General and commanded a division. Soon after this battle, he and General Lambert were appointed to the civil and military government of Scotland. And on, that reti on the retirement of Lambert, he was elevated to the supreme command of Scotland by land and sea. In 1870, one of Richard Dean's descendants, a London Anglican clergyman, the Reverend John Bathurst Dean by name, wrote the general's biography entitled, The Life of Richard Dean. On three occasions in the volume, the author notes the fact that his forebear had been a Baptist. General Richard Dean believed in the doctrine of soul liberty, and no one other than the Baptists in his day held to that blessed tenet. Being a fearless advocate of religious freedom, General Dean's life motto was, and I quote, neither to compel nor be compelled in matters of conscience, end of quote. Of course, that motto, as it reflected soul liberty, was in early England, denounced as a shocking heresy by all parties except the Baptists. The periodical literature of his day described General Dean as, and I quote, a valiant and godly gentleman, end of quote. And this is reflected by the fact that General Dean was the only Baptist in England buried in a royal vault in Westminster Abbey. Dean's biographer wrote, and I quote, The hearse was received at the west door of the abbey by the great officers of state, and the coffin was borne by a select party of soldiers to, to Henry the Seventh's chapel, 
and deposited in one of the royal vaults, end of quote. Oliver Cromwell attended the funeral of the brave British Baptist. The above-mentioned fact could easily slip by unnoticed by American readers, but it is an amazing fact that General Dean could have commanded such respect as to be the only Baptist ever to be buried at Westminster Abbey. Burial in Westminster Abbey is the ultimate honor in England. Westminster Abbey is a Gothic church in Westminster, London, that began being constructed in A.D. 1050. It is the burial place of English kings and notables. Great Britain has produced many famed and worthy Baptists to whom this honor might have been granted. Thousands lined the streets for the internment of Charles Haddon Spurgeon, but this honor was not afforded to that great preacher. William Carey, the father of modern-day missions, might well have been considered for internment at Westminster Abbey. After all, such an honor was afforded to David Livingston, the great explorer and missionary to Africa, but Carey was not so honored. Thus today, as we call to remembrance the death of the great Baptist military leader, Major General and General at Sea, Richard Dean, we living Baptists do well to honor his memory. He lived before his time as he proclaimed soul liberty and religious freedom in a period of darkness. May we realize the price that has been paid for the freedom that we take for granted, and may we give ourselves to the Lord to make our lives count in the battle for truth. To God be the glory.